Welcome to the second in our series of cybersecurity career intelligence podcasts. The goal of this is to really help people that are just getting into the field or people transitioning into the field from another work environment to figure out what is going on in the cybersecurity field. And the, our approach is really to interview experts in the field because the requirements of jobs and positions and the technology are changing so much. So we really want to get experts in on a regular basis. And today I'm very happy to introduce Brian Kelly. He is currently the director of the cybersecurity program at Educause. He's been an active member of Educause starting in 2009. He's been uh, vice chair of their conferences. He's chaired their 2018 Security Professionals Conference. But the key thing for this conversation is before that, he was the chief information security officer at Quinnipiac, having joined Quinnipiac in 2006. He started his information security career with the United States Air Force, and he also holds bachelor's degrees and master's degrees in cybersecurity. And so we were, we're not happy to see him leave Quinnipiac, but we're certainly happy in his new position. So for him in his new position. So welcome, Brian. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Good to see you again. And I thought not everybody knows what Educause is. Maybe uh, it would be great if you could educate us a little bit on what, what's the role of Educause and what's your role there. Sure. So outside of higher ed, so sort of everyone within inside the higher ed community knows of, of Educause. But, you know, outside of it, it's really its primary role as a nonprofit association is to sort of elevate IT within higher ed. So really working in every aspect of IT within a campus or you know, college or university environment, from uh, teaching and learning, from immersive classrooms to uh, professional development. And then there's this really important part of it called the Earth Cybersecurity Program, which mm -hmm. is the area that I'm most concerned with and, and focused on and sort of working with our 4,000 members across the US, uh, Canada, Europe, and uh, Australia to make sure that they're you know, sort of engaged from a cybersecurity best practices. How are we all working together? How can we learn from each other? And so that's really the goal and mission of Educause is to, as we say, elevate IT within colleges and universities. And I have a small part to play in that now with the, the cyber program. Wonderful. That sounds like a, a very needed role and also a challenging role as well, right? With everything that's going on. So Absolutely. Never a dull moment. You're not looking, as you know, not looking for news yeah. on cyber. It's, it's everywhere. Yeah, not looking for news. That's a good way to put it. So let's go back to uh, when you were CISO at Quinnipiac. Let's, uh, my first question has, has to do with who would you want to hire? What kind of, if you had one or two people you could hire, and I know a lot of university programs are not, certainly not overstaffed. What kind of a role would you be looking for either here or in, you know, what do you think people amongst your client base, what are they looking for and what kind of skills and experience and things of that nature? Yeah, I think the short answer is it depends. And I think that's always been a tough, you know, to say just that one person, that's always been the challenge. And certainly at Quinnipiac and other smaller colleges and universities, you're often limited in the number of FTEs that you have. So we often would try to find sort of that one person that could do it all. And that's really difficult to find, you know, sort of everything you need, you know, uh, they don't make Swiss army knife uh, huh. humans. Um, yeah. So, you know, it's such a broad field, right? So you have people that are really good at, at policy, right? And they really enjoy writing and talking about uh, information security or cybersecurity policies, but those, those people might not be very good at programming or coding. So, you know, you might, it depends on the institution, right? I keep coming back to that. It, it depends on the need of the organization. I think for someone starting out, you know, the more well-balanced you can be, the closer that you can sort of be to that, um, that Swiss army knife is important, right? And then we, we talk about soft skills, the ability to sort of articulate a message, uh, work through a problem, you know, critical thinking, some of the things that are, are critical in an academic setting, um, really translate well to to cybersecurity as a profession. Interesting. So the the person you might hire, I guess, would depend on the exact situation that you have in whatever 
uh, school you or organization you might right. be you, unique to the needs of that institution and you know specific to Quinnipiac before I left we were looking more for you know programming and sort of automation skills and mm -hmm. more on the technical side as we start to see security operations evolving or more from someone sitting and looking at well, my Air Force days we used to say looking at a scope but you know looking at logs and sort of being more of an analyst to sort of moving to someone that can program and automate the detection and response actions, which is more of a technical skill set than necessarily a, a soft skill set. Okay, great. So you've talked about a lot of different skills, soft skills, critical thinking, technology skills. Um, so let's go back to when I think you joined Quinnipiac around 2006. Uh, but you already had experience with information security in the Air Force before that. So can you talk about how you got into the security field and especially what aspects of that might apply to people today? Because our students are, they're all in IT in some way, shape or form. They're not necessarily in the mainstream of security. So what, what experiences uh, might, might translate in today's market? Sure, and I think that's to some degree the beauty of cybersecurity is that you get to it from so many different disciplines and, mm -hmm. and areas within IT. My, my short story is I, uh, I started out with a criminal justice uh, degree and wanted to be in law enforcement and long family lineage of, of police officers. And mm -hmm. that took me to a, a meeting with a recruiter, with an Air Force recruiter about opportunities for law enforcement positions within the Air Force. Uh, he quickly uh, convinced me to join the Air Force and to join with this computer uh, operators, uh, AFSC as they call it in the Air Force, which had nothing to do with law enforcement. It, it did come, however, with the top secret clearance um, and that's how he sold me on it. And as I sort of worked through that computer uh, position, there was aspects of sort of police work, right? So we talk about cybersecurity and I, I really sort of moved into a career in, in the early mid 90s doing communication security for the Air Force. So cryptography and, and how we secured our communications. And, and to the mid and late 90s, that evolved into sort of commercial stuff, firewalls and antivirus and you know, this thing that was new called Windows 95 that was really starting to get um, traction. So, you know, I think for students, for professionals, um, you know, the pathways that you choose aren't always the pathways that you end up taking. And sometimes, uh, like you said, you are, you're maybe currently in an IT role, maybe you're a networking person in your in your business. And you know, certainly there's security aspects of networking. So you start to get a little bit more uh, network security, or maybe you're a, a web developer in IT and you're, you're programming and doing websites. And there's certainly a huge aspect of security when we start talking about websites and that. So I think there's always a way to take your foundational IT background and um, we talk now everything is cybersecurity. When I started, it was computer security, then it was data security, then it was information security, and now everything is, if you sprinkle cyber on it, you know, we, always, we say cyber with everything. So, you know, I think there's an opportunity for those students or those professionals that are, you know, foundationally have a, 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 a good solid start in IT to use cybersecurity as a vehicle to move them toward, you know, a security aspect of something they might already be doing. Yeah, that's very cool. Since you mentioned cyber, what's coming next? Any any new uh, buzzwords out there? Or? I don't know what the next bu the next buzzword is. I'm you know I'm reading uh, the uh, the latest Bruce Schneier book, uh, "Click Here to Kill Everybody," and okay. he talks he talks beyond the Internet of Things. He, he calls it the Internet of Everything. You know, of yeah. just uh, of that. I think you know there's there's always the challenge, and it's interesting that you say that. I was thinking earlier today that many of the things that we, we talk about in cyber have been around for you know, 20 plus years. We're still yeah. talking about uh, topics that have existed for a long time. And then there's these new things like IoT and cloud and, and containers and, and different parts of it that are, that are evolving. So while we're, we're still sort of working on the foundational things, we're, we're now layering uh, risk and, and things on top of it. Yeah, I think that's a good point. And so I know a lot of students are and people are trying to transition into different roles. And so they may have 10, 20, 30 years of experience in a different area. But as you just said, I think that experience isn't invalidated, right? What you wanna do is build on that because right. all the old technology didn't go away 
and the old, you know, the basic ideas didn't go away. So there is some new technology that's coming along, but the old stuff isn't obsolete. No, no, absolutely. And you think if someone says, well, you know, I was an old mainframer and I worked yeah. in, in the Vax era or what have you, uh, conceptually where we are with cloud is, you know, it used to be in the data center. Well, the cloud is a data center. It just isn't necessarily on your premise. So, um, you know, what's old is new again in some degree. And it's yeah. still, it still, you know, resonates for those students that have maybe been around for a little bit. Yeah, that's very cool. So let me sort of transition to one other question is, um, so let's say you're in an enterprise size firm, whether it's academia or not, and you're not in the information security group. What, based on your experience, what kinds of strategies would you use? How would you, how do you segue from your security group into more of a focused security rule. Any thoughts on what steps, you know? Well, well certainly if they're, if they're in a program, if they're in a cybersecurity <laughs> degree program, that's the first step, right? Is yeah. going out and, and establishing some academic credentials yeah. in that field. That always helps. Um, again, within the size of the company, uh, you might be able to work on, you know, cross departmental project teams. You, you know, depending on the, that size, you might have an opportunity to sort of participate with the security project at the company. If it's a smaller firm or if it's a, a place where you don't have access, um, I often tell students to look for volunteer opportunities, whether that's a, you know, a local senior center or something within your, their community where they can volunteer to you know, do a health check or a vulnerability assessment, you know, um, gives them some skills, some real world resume type work. Um, you know, volunteering, we see a lot of with uh, high schools these days. Um, so, you know, so within your communities, there's opportunities for sort of resume and skill building that then maybe leads back. And that's always the challenge, right, is how do you get the job without the experience and how do you get the experience without the job, right, is, yeah. uh, is certainly a, the challenge that, that hasn't changed much. But there, I think there's some opportunities to sort of volunteer and, and maybe uh, get some exposure that you wouldn't have an opportunity uh, within your own companies. Yeah, I think that's extremely good advice. By doing some of this volunteer work, you're helping the community, you're getting new experience, you're getting things on your resume because you want some hands-on experiences to put on there to get that, you know, the door to the next job to open. So I'm right. sorry to see you left quit. <laughs> that's really good advice. So yeah. outstanding. Yeah, very good. Well, um, any? do you have any... Uh, uh, contact? Are you giving any talks or any way people uh, that listening could contact you or any information you want to yeah, share? Yeah, so I'll share my, you know, I'm, I'm fairly active on social media, on Twitter, mm -hmm. on LinkedIn. I'll provide my email that you can share. Um, uh, no local speaking engagements on the agenda just yet. Uh, we're hosting a conference in Chicago next week. We've got about 900 people coming for that. And, um, you know, that'll keep, that'll keep us busy. But you know, the, you know, the other thing, too, and we didn't talk about is certainly the networking, reaching out to folks, um, always open to connect with students, with professionals. Um, it, it, I think that's uh, another way that we just didn't discuss. And, you know, how do you, you bridge that gap from where your current career is, is using that network that you might have established either on a, on a social media platform like LinkedIn or even within your, your own companies. A lot of times people don't express that they have an interest in a field and their own management might not be aware that, you know, hey, Fred or Brian is interested in, in doing security. So uh, sometimes for the, the geeky introverts that security and IT people tend to be, it's hard to have those conversations. But a lot of times you just, just simply talking, talking to everybody and saying, hey, I'm really interested in this. Or let me tell you about the program that I'm currently involved in at Quinnipiac and the, and the really cool things we're doing with our cybersecurity uh, program. And that helps sort of move the conversation and people, you know, are aware that, Hey, this guy or this person is interested in it. So, um, you know, networking is important. And so I encourage you to share, share my contact info and, and let po folks reach out to me as they want. Thank you very much, Brian. Thanks so much for your time and good thoughts. And thanks to all for listening. And next week we'll have another cybersecurity leader. Have a good afternoon. Thanks, Fred. Great seeing you.